Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 277 for Friday, November 17th, 2023. Click, click, zoom. From Zenata Consulting, I am Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Cold, and let's get right on into the show. Well, Tyler, this is our last show before we zip into the uh, Thanksgiving week here. So uh, it is. Turkey day. You know, have some turkey, have a good time. Remember all the poor turkeys that gave their lives for us this fine turkey day. So for all you vegetarians out there, all the turkeys of the world applaud you. So yes, all kinds of good stuff here. But you know, as we head into the holiday season, there are a lot of holiday things coming up besides turkey day. So with that, uh, let's get into our announcements and events. I cannot believe it, Tyler, but it is that time of year again. These Zenmies are upon us. So the uh, 2023 uh, Zenmi Awards, um, which we will do, I thought, is it the last week of the year? We do the full Zoho year in review and the Zenmies. So yep. please, you know, you're going to want to head over. If you get our newsletter, you can just head over to Zenata.com slash Zenmies, Z-E-N-M-Y apostrophe S, and vote. We want you to uh, go ahead and pick your... Uh, Pick your top five apps, I think is what we're asking here. So two to five. We're going to rate them, be the best apps of the year. And then we'd like you to put in what your current favorite telephony solution is. And on top of that, what your current favorite Zoho Marketplace application is. So you give us those, we will announce the winners. Um, ballot stuffing is perfectly acceptable. I've seen it happen in the past. We're not going to stop you. You know, nothing can be done here. Um, are there are any election deniers here. Sorry, you know, the votes are final. It's only one person tallying these things. And uh, that's it. Did we add any new ones in? I'm kind of running through the list here. We had so many. FSM, FSM is new. I don't expect it, it to win quite yet, given that it's so new. Uh, it to is the there. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. There are some crazy ones I'm seeing lately um, that I'm starting to notice some names fall in. They actually haven't officially announced, but like the logos are appearing on things. Um, that's, that's, uh, we'll probably have to cover that in our year in review as to maybe what's happening in 2024. So anyway, that's the Zen Mies. And then as always, if you head on over to, uh, club.zanata.com, that is our online community. And that is where we keep track of all the events in the world of Zoho's as well. So we have the CRM Zen show and, uh, coming up next Tuesday is going to be the Zoho mail full product tutorial. Uh, that Tyler and I will be doing for you. And uh, then rolling into December, we're basically going to have the year in review. Um, and the uh, Zenmi, looks like, is that going to be the 29th? Huh. Yeah. Yep, looks like the 29th, right before we head out for the new year. Got to do that on the 29th. That'll be exciting. All righty. And with that, let's get right on into the news. Well, a little PSA for everybody here. Uh, the uh, U.S. data center maintenance is scheduled for November 25th at uh, and and the 2nd of December uh, at between 6.30 and 9.30 p.m. So the 25th, if I'm doing my math right on that, that's going to be like a Saturday or Friday night? Friday night. Yeah. Uh, Friday night. Yeah. So there you go. Um, they always say they're going to be down for three hours. It usually seems to be down for about a half an hour. I think that's just a yep, little bit of high and then come in, come in low. That's the, I think the right way to do this type of thing much better than they tell you 30 minutes and it takes three hours. Right. So, right. uh, yeah, never hurts to just be a little safe, uh, when you're quoting out any outages or downtime like this. Yeah. And this is good. They, what they change the oil, they rotate the tires, it's just general, data center maintenance i think that goes goes in there they change some light bulbs a little pm so. yeah. yeah so but and then they've got one of those uh big old leaf blowers they just go in and they blow out all the dust oh, all the dust yeah, out of all the fans yeah, all the, the fans. everything cool that's how it goes mm -hmm. it's the guy walking around doing the maintenance every year it's a good job if you can get it you know data center cleanups are us and moving right along uh well what do we got here zoom into meetings with click, 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 zoom, title of our show. 
got really excited when this dropped. This is kind of interesting. You can now connect, click, and zoom. I was assuming that there would that like you would be launching a zoom from within a click and have something. It is nice. There are some really interesting little features they've done here, um, but it is an integration and you actually have to kind of, you know, enabling it is takes a little bit. There's a video here on how to do that. So you will kind of want to watch this video if you are going to integrate them. Um, but, uh, you know, you can then customize it a little more to your, to your best needs, but I think an interesting application. Yeah. And so it looks like right now it's going to do three things for you inside a click. So it'll do a daily meeting reminder. So at the beginning of each day, it will basically send you a message of all of your Zoom meetings for that day. It also has a uh, Zoom bot functionality. So you can create and view Zoom meetings directly from within the click workspace. So that might be close. My like magic ideal thing would just be I pull up Brett and click and I click the Zoom button and it just launches a Zoom meeting. It oh. sounds like what they're doing here is you'll have a Zoom bot or maybe, you know, Zoom slash commands where you could create and send a meeting link. So that's pretty darn close, right, to like my ideal kind of imaginary future state. You know, we, we have found ourselves using Zoom a lot more for like internal calls. We used to use just Click a lot, but just AV quality issues. I know Josh to this day still gets weird audio drops on Click. Um, using, I think like the same tech setup that like you have <laughs> just randomly yeah. just gets these issues. So, and um, I love, yeah, it. Nice I mean, need. I love it and I love using it. I love calling on it. I mean, it drives me nuts though, because what it does for me, and I don't know, it's just randomly changes the audio input. I mean, uh, it, it call, um, the other day it decided that my phone was my microphone and I didn't even know how that happened, but somehow the phone connected to the PC, the, the, this became yeah. my microphone. I think you were on a call with me and all of a sudden it sounded like you were across the room. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's some crazy integrations there. So it can be a little, uh, can be a little difficult, but cool, cool stuff. The slash commands might be interesting, right? Well, that's that's kind of what I'm excited about, right? Cause what I do now is I go into zoom, I make a meeting, I go into the participants and I click to invite you. But if I could do a slash command for like slash Zoom meeting and it makes one, launches it, invites everybody, that would be kind of slick. So um, I will, yeah, I, you go uh, into a group and click and just, yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. Or you're just, you want to do a one off with somebody, you know, you don't want anybody to know you're talking. You don't want those little telephone icons and click saying, ooh, Brett and Tyler are talking to each other. I wonder if they're talking about me. You know, that's kind of, that's we are. Thing. We are. If you think you are, we are. Moving on. Uh, well, in Zoho CRM, we, circuits um, are back with a big update. Uh, I'm so excited about this that prior to the show, I said, Tyler, what are circuits? So why don't you take this one? Buddy? So yeah, circuits are a kind of development tool that uh, Zoho is trying to build out to kind of give a more front end UI to processes that require deluge. So a lot of what you could do with circuits, you could also do with workflows, generally through more than one workflow. But if you wanted to build a complicated process that maybe bridges multiple modules, multiple scripts, et cetera, you may end up wanting to use a circuit. Um, I'll be honest, I have not played that much with circuits because for me, when I hear a requirement that's an if then statement, I think workflow rather than thinking circuit. But that doesn't mean that they're not useful. They are pretty slick. Um, so yeah, it looks like the main update here is around pricing. I didn't see too much about functionality. Looks more like, you know, these big updates are primarily around the pricing and crediting system, which they're introducing. Oh, so just the things they do with the English language. Words have meanings. Anyway, so they're charging tariffs uh, for these things now. So, a little bit of a, there's a taxation going on on the circuits. <laughs> no fees for use. It's just a straight Technically, up corporate headquarters is in the U.S., so I wonder if U.S. users are don't have to pay the tariff for the cross-border <laughs> uh, usage. Uh, yeah, so it looks like just a a small, minor transaction-based fee here for circuits. Um, not a huge like, amount. So first twenty five thousand in a month, they're going to cost you point zero 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 one cents. Um, and then up from there, at a decreasing amount per individual transition. So. Again, I think it's fine. I do kind of see this trend over time of like odds and ends just getting either new crediting systems or like less favorable right. crediting systems that makes me a little nervous with some of these different products. Um, I know we were talking about 
Is it uh, CRM portal users a month or two back that they introduced a new crediting system and it was just kind of confusing and it wasn't overly expensive. Let's be clear. It's not like this is going to break the bank, but um, yeah, I'm a little concerned about just these crediting systems finding their way into just like system functionality like this. Right. Yeah. Tariffs for everyone. Tariffs for everyone. So I had to change out my glasses here. Uh, we're doing the entire show. If you've been following us since last week, I've determined to do it on this little tiny nine inch monitor um, that I'm staring into. So I have perfect eye contact with you. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes. Anyway, my old, my current glasses were not uh, able to handle this anymore. So I'm swapping out. Uh, all right. Well, Let's good news. Little, like non-reflective lens on there and then you'll be good to go. Yeah. Is it, do, I, do I have a little reflective going on? A bit. Less actually on these lenses than the other ones. Well, these actually were my my real computer glasses, so maybe maybe just use them anyway. So there you go. All right, and moving on, uh, build your own interactive recommendation system in CRM with guided selling. Uh, this is Zoho CRM's uh, configure price quote engine now facilitates guided selling. Tyler, you have done uh, tutorials on the CPQ engine. You like the CPQ engine. Uh, they, I thought we saw some guided selling stuff on this before, but they're acting like it's new. So it was this yeah, new. Maybe it was early access, and now it's rolled out. Um, yeah, okay. we did a we did a full video on the CPQ module. This wouldn't have been con included in that; it wasn't available at the time. Basically, you know, the default CPQ um, rule set is primarily based on like items or things about the quotes, right? Things like that. Um, what guided selling is essentially doing is identifying things about the related customer or customer account that might require a suggestive sell. So common example is, let's say you sold a client a product one year ago. Uh, that product has a one year warranty. They give you a call 360 days later, right, to order something new, right? Guided selling might be able to put it on the sales reps radar like, hey, sell them that new stuff, but also their warranty date is within five days of expiration. So go ahead and suggest this other item. So it's basically just giving you another vector outside of just strictly the items to um, create rules. And they kind of had a little table there that shows kind of what I mean is that now you can use customer and vendor data as part of your rule sets rather than like just looking at the products themselves. Um, again, it's pretty solid. Like, obviously there are going to be tools out there that have crazier, more complicated, you know, more feature rich CPQ implementation. Um, but this is, I think going to cover what a lot of people need. I mean, it's, it's pretty in depth and pretty flexible. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple customers with many, many users actually now running a lot of their quotes through this. Um, so well worth keeping an eye on it. Um, the one thing Zoho, if you're listening, uh, that should really be a segment is it'd be great to be able to have a digital quote acceptance from CRM that's not a signature. Um, we've been finding more and more of our customers, we end up building out their quoting as books estimates, even if they're not gonna use books for accounting, just to send the estimate from there because you can just click accept as a customer, where when you send a CRM quote, they have to like email you back saying yes, or you put a signature field on it, but a signature like sometimes feels like too much for just accepting a quote or estimate. Um, so minor thing to consider Zoho, that'd be the one thing yeah. that I think for some of our users, at least keep them using those books estimates. It's like, well, I don't want to have to get an email back from them, go into CRM and mark it accepted. I just want them to accept it. Um, so something I'd love to see just added to the CRM quoting, just to, I think, bring it up to where a lot of people want it to be. Yeah. And interestingly enough, you can use this entire feature without paying a tariff. So pretty good. Tariff free guided selling. And moving on with the news, a uh, final reminder here, uh, Zoho Desk old user interface will be deprecated on December 15th. Um, man, you should be on the new version. You should have been on the new version a year ago. And if you're on the old version, well, get on the new version. I think you'd be pretty yep. happy. Yeah, this is what they did kind of end of last year. Um, yep. They did a couple things to improve the UI, but also the performance and load speed inside of Desk. So they took like a two-pronged approach. Um, one, they set up auto archiving for tickets. Uh, something a lot of front-end users aren't aware of is that having a bunch of data in a system inherently makes it run slower. 
Um, so they set up auto archiving to basically move old tickets to a different database in your account just to not slow down, you know, the, the actual working space. And they rolled out this new UI. And the big thing with the new UI is that they rebuilt it all in React.js. So like structurally, it looks pretty similar. There's like a little improvements here and there, but it's going to feel extremely familiar. Um, it's just faster. It's faster to load a ticket. It's faster to load a list of tickets. just every kind of incremental thing is just faster in the new UI. Um, so yeah, like Brett mentioned, if you haven't switched over yet, take the leap. Uh, you're going to be able to do everything you used to do uh, just incrementally faster. You'll be very, very happy. And wrapping up the news, uh, we've got some new features to boost your holiday sales in 2023. If you're a Zoho Forms user, we've got some cool new templates for you. Um, it's going to give you a festive bake-over. So if you're watching us on YouTube, it's just a new form builder. They've got some just new templates that are rather rather nice and some Christmas cardy forms and uh, that kind of stuff. And it'll boost your sales because I tell you what, if it's Christmas time and I'm get, I'm looking at a form and it's not Christmassy, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to another website. I don't care if they have the product I want. I'm going to another website that has a Christmassy form because I want to boost their sales because they put the effort in, Tyler. That's what it's all about. It's all about the effort. The time. Put the time and the effort. Anyway, you know, it's kind so of a slow news week if we're uh, <laughs> including <laughs> holiday uh, holiday templates and forms. Uh, yeah, right. you know it's, a, it's a slower week, everybody. It's been a slow week. Well, it's Thanksgiving. And let's uh, let's boost, let's pump this up, Tyler. Why don't you tell us about our implementation of the week? All righty. So implementation this week was a build out for uh, Zoho CRM around filtering product selections that are available to users. Um, using field data. And this was built out by Lucas and uh, Eduardo or Eddie uh, on the Zenata team. So kind of the goal here for this particular client, um, the types of leads that they're working with, um, you can think more that they're selling a service, not a product. So it's called products because that's the products module. Um, but it's really a scenario where when a lead comes in, we're going to choose one applicable product for them. And then that's going to be the kind of structure and, and pricing for their engagement. And so the trick was kind of the customer's request is, hey, we're going to go through and ask them these set of questions, right? And capture qualification data. What's your budget? How quickly do you need this done? You know, an understanding of the pain points we're looking to solve. Then using that data that we've gathered from the lead, they wanted to make sure that their sales team, whether they're an experienced veteran at the company or someone on their first day selling, is going to be able to choose appropriate products uh, based on that qualification info um, to you know send quotes or propose that particular lead. Um, important thing about this is that uh, we really wanted to do it in a way where it captures it while they're filling out the record. Um, so we landed on doing it for a client script or doing it with a client script rather than Deluge. Um, so for those that don't use a lot of client scripts, they're actually run in your browser using JavaScript rather than on, uh, you know, Zoho servers, which means they can happen instantly as you're like filling out a lead or filling out qualification fields within a particular lead. Um, one of the really cool things that client scripts can do is actually filter the available options in a lookup field. And so a lot of the times like we'll do this in a simple way. So let's say you have like a custom module and it links to an account and it has a contact lookup. A really simple use of this type of client script would be to say, hey, only show contacts that are in the account that's selected for this particular custom module entry. Um, in this case, there were more like five parameters and based on a logical matrix of those five parameters and what was chosen there, we want to surface a subset of the products that can be actually you know, relevant for that particular lead. Um, so we did that with the client script so that uh, nothing ever goes out incorrectly because it'll actually stop you. It won't even allow you to pick the incorrect product. So essentially, as they're going through filling out this qualification data, all that data is getting aggregated into that lead record. Um, and it's essentially filtering on the back end that product's uh, lookup field. By the time they get to the product's lookup field in that kind of intake flow, they've already filled everything in. So when they click that drop down, you know, you can imagine maybe there are 100 products in total. Now, because of those field selections, there's only going to be seven because those seven are applicable for all of those choices that were made 
uh, earlier in that intake process. So definitely one of those tools, client scripts that we're finding just more and more use for. I mean, just the ability to filter a lookup field uh, in broad strokes, right, is just very, very useful. And being able to do it dynamically as like a user is filling out data um, just makes for a workflow that ideally doesn't frustrate users. Because the last thing you want is for them to go through the whole thing, pick the product, like imagine right. they haven't saved yet, right? So they pick the product, they tell the customer they're going to use that product, they click save, and now the system unselects it or you know notifies them that it's not applicable. For some of these cases where you're filling something out while you're talking to someone, you got to do it with a client script so yeah. that everything stays up to date. Super slick. What was the uh, implementation time on this, do you think? Not super long. I mean, it, it varies based on like how complicated your conditions are. This one was a little longer than normal because there were five and it wasn't like, it's not like each one just filtered out a set. It was like different combinations of them kind of had different outcomes. So it ranges, but it's in the range of like one hour to a couple hours generally for something like this. Um, you know, as we've gotten like, as client scripts get more mature and we've documented more kind of like quick solves for ourselves, the timeline to implement them is coming down. Very cool. All right. Fantastic job, Lucas and Eduardo. And with that, let's head over to Club Z and check out our code share of the week. Gregory is at it again. Um, uh, writing a deluge when Zoho desk metadata template for deluge functions. So basically if you're writing a deluge script for Zoho desk, you will probably want to pull over things such as organization ID, department ID and agent ID. And this is going to help you do such. Yes. Yep. Essentially like those are just parameters that are required for most things, specifically like org ID and department ID. Basically, anything you do in Desk, you need to tell it what organization, which you probably just have one, uh, but more importantly, which department. You know, you're going to create a ticket in the billing department, not the technical side. And so all this does, and it's really nice, actually, this is a, a really useful code share because you could just drop this at the beginning of any script that you're writing in Desk, and it will just pull all of that metadata that you oftentimes need. Right. So right. like you're oftentimes going to need a list of agents with their IDs and emails. Right. So just put this in every time and then you have that every time. You're always going to need your organization ID, right? To make any updates in Zoho Desk. So put that in here. Um, really nice. Similar with like, uh, I would imagine Greg might end up doing one of these for like books or inventory because there are a couple like metadata things that you basically always need when you're writing any function inside of books. Um, so yeah, this this doesn't actually do the work for you. It doesn't It's not like a script that would work or do anything on its own. It's just something you would use at the beginning of a script to save yourself time right down the line and get all that data organized uh, right away. Very cool. Um, great job, Greg. And guys, if you don't, uh, please head over to club.sonata.com if you haven't already and join our online community. We have a whole general discussion area. We've got to keep track of all the Zoho news. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff we don't cover on the show. Uh, you can ask a question for our Asinata, anything about Zoho show, Azaz. Uh, video tutorial requests, all sorts of things. Head on over, join our thousand plus user community and uh, you know, let's help make Zoho better. One conversation at a time. That's all we can do. We have to talk, Tyler. Talking. Nice slogan. Yeah. Help make Zoho better one conversation at a time. There we oh, go. Yeah. There you go. Get Good an AI made banner of that somewhere. Good for one a year. <laughs> we go. No, the best one this year, the best Brettism this year is definitely in a world of whoops. This is a big one that <laughs> I doubt you're going to top that by the end of the year. That just brought me so much. Joy. I don't know what happened here, but in the world of whoops, uh, this is a big one. What, what, was that the uh, wiping out of all phone numbers? Yeah, the phone numbers. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. all phone numbers. Hey, was. guys, your 10 digit phone numbers are gone. <laughs> um, you can't get them back. Uh, but go get new ones. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. And with that, let's uh, head over to Zanata and see what we've got happening over there. By the way, shout out to shout out to Freddie for saving that audio clip. I was hoping you had that somewhere in your vault, uh, <laughs> but having it just ready to go like that for this show, I, I just anytime you want it, Freddy. I give it to you anytime. <laughs> All right, well, then I think I'm going to have to call on, you know, 
Go ahead, Freddie. Well, okay. Um, I guess you're letting me drive this one here. So, no, no I was going to do have a little tit for tat. I think I need to hear a little Tyler soundbite right now. Oh, the Tyler yeah, soundbite. What, what do we have? Good golly. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> yes, there we go. That's actually two splices, isn't it? That's two different things that you put together. That is correct. Yes, correctly. there was a, yeah. I believe, and there are two different shows. So, Good Golly was on a Zaz, and Look at That Bad Boy was on the CRM Zen Show. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh, uh, a so, bit unhinged uh, here, adding into the holiday season. <laughs> this is kind of cool. So, um, we're gonna I'm gonna briefly touch on this here, but Chat GPT now allows you to build well. OpenAI now allows you to build your own GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformers. And I keep saying that should be GPTT, but anyway. Um, and our team has been playing with this. So we have a blog over on uh, Zanata, which kind of talk you through this a little bit. But um, our trusted producer here, Freddie, has been hard at work building these little GPTs. And Freddie, kind of give us your your impression and uh, any tips or tricks you may have. Yeah, so I mean, I've built a, a, a couple of them now. I, I built one for as I set some videos up for the YouTube channel, and it helps me with some ideas for some show titles and stuff like that. I also built, um, had this idea for a knowledge base for the Azaz show, where we have tons of questions that have come in. We've got 30 episodes. We've about to do 30, the 30th episode so far. And uh, I figured it would be a nice thing to have just this resource of everything we've answered and if there's anybody that needs to refer to it create a knowledge base with it and so I've taken the transcripts of every episode every question I've put it into a Google Doc saved it as a docx file and uploaded it to the to my own GPT it's so fun it's so much fun that's amazing and you were saying like if a person searches for that now it actually will not only give them that answer but then the link to the YouTube the the exact part of the YouTube video where the question's answered? Well, yeah. So what I did was I actually took a timestamped link and put it into the doc. And so therefore, yeah, no, no. when when you ask it, hey, is where's the spot where the show where it talks about it on the show? It says, oh, here's the link. And it gives you the timestamp link where that question was discussed. So that was just an idea that I had. And I was like, how can I make this happen? Let me just put it in the full blown resource doc and see what happens. And, and it worked like a charm. Wow. And we can make a chatbot out of that, right? I believe so. I've been watching some YouTube videos. I'm obsessing. I'll be honest. I'm slightly obsessing. And there are some people where, you know, you 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 get, you threw out the question saying, hey, can we embed this on a website? And, you're, and so I'm looking that up. And there's no real way to do it um, other than maybe just using an API call to create your own bot that uses the, that GPT as a resource. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So, so, but the big key, I think you were telling me, and I'm not sure we covered it in this doc, is that when you're building this, you're uploading one doc, right? I think so. Uh, I'm. I'm that's what's going on. It, you might be able to do multiple docs, but I've always just been safe with one doc because it 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 seems like it's it moves a little quicker because it just has one doc to look through. Because our dev team was thinking about compiling like a massive. Zoho doc of all Zoho docs of every API call mm -hmm. and every single thing and putting it all together and dropping that into uh, into our own little... You might be able GPT. to do multiple docs. Um, that is something I need to look up. I'm not too sure on that, so don't quote me okay. on that one. Very cool. This is one of those areas where I'm excited that uh, Zoho is working on natural language processing. Yeah. Think about for some customers who have just like a massive knowledge base or imagine if we could plug a bot like this just into our learn account, right? With all those like hundreds and hundreds of articles and solutions and this, that, or the other. Um, I know they're working on it and they've announced they're working on it. So we don't have to be sneaky about that. Um, but that'll be very exciting to be able to do some QA against your own Zoho instance and everything that it knows. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was watching, uh, Lex Friedman's podcast the other day, and he was interviewing Elon. Um, Elon's making the rounds. I don't know. He's like pushing a book. I can't figure out what he's doing, but he's everywhere these days. Um, and anyway, Elon was there and talking about his AI that they've released, which is called Grok. Mm -hmm. you, you know, but Grok has a uh, smart aleck mode <laughs> where it gives you 
<laughs> it gives you answers, correct answers in a smart aleck kind of way. But it was it was kind of interesting. Uh, it's another one that's come out. I mean, it, it's starting to, I think it's interesting the voices we're getting around these, you know. Uh, I mean, you can tell Chat GPT to, you know, give you an article written in the voice of whoever you want. Um, yeah. And it's pretty close in a lot of ways, right? Um, and you can, uh, you know, but at the same time, just to have it one that are talking to you in that way is, I think, is kind of kind of it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how it all goes. It really is. Yeah, and, and large Freddie companies Wilson. are making big moves with that. I know um, Microsoft recently laid off every single reporter that was working for MSN and replaced all of those articles with AI generated content. Um, I won't get into the specifics of how that went wrong for them. Uh, but if you want a funny story, just look up uh, MSN Guardian article. They they took a Guardian article and they ran a certain poll against that article that people found extremely distasteful. But the whole thing was done by AI. AI decided to run this poll on MSN about this article. And it just uh, is not in the best of taste um, yeah. what ended up going on. So definitely put some it boundary does. conditions on these when you set them I up. Would, I, would say, I, mean, I mean, we're in, we're in a whole brave new world. I mean. Freddie's actually run, you know, I guess hours of your voice and my voice through, uh, you know, the a AI voice generator. And so if we're talking and things get really messed up and the audio gets screwed up, he just basically types the script in and has it put it in our voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Replaces it. Um, what was it? You had me, you had me singing a, a song earlier today in my voice, Freddie. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I'm messing around <laughs> once more. Uh, yeah. I got, some, I got a Christmas tune that you sang. Or didn't, yeah. but maybe. Chestnuts <laughs> roasting on an open fire. A little, a little quirky there the, at the uh, end. AI that one, oh, <laughs> 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 nice one, nice one. Very, very good. All right. All right. With that, enough of this. But uh, with that, guys, let's head on over to our tip of the week. Oh, Josh Oliver, uh, probably the greatest uh, Zoho creator developer on the planet is, uh, and I'm not joking about that, I would gab with me, he's probably way up there, um, has uh, been continuing with his set of tutorials on uh, Zoho Creator. And this one is on integrating standard modules in Zoho CRM with the Zoho Creator application. Uh, this is pulling in data and fields and various things from the CRM into Creator. And he's going to give you a little step-by-step -step guide here in about 16 and a half minutes. Then step you through this. And this is something we do a lot within Creator. We oftentimes are using it as like an extension of CRM functionality. And sometimes to make that work nicely, you do need to just sync certain top-level records like accounts and contacts between the two systems. Um, so this, if you're doing anything in the realm of like a Creator portal, or a creator application that's going to use CRM data at all. This is well worth your 16 minutes to watch through this because it's going to skip you over a lot of pain and suffering in setting up that initial connection between the two uh, platforms. Yeah. I mean, it's very cool. We use it, uh, you know, we've got a massive portal, which is a whole creator application that we use to run our business and interface with our clients. And it's talking to the CRM and other applications. And uh, this is the basis for all of that. And yep. if you haven't already, we would sure love it if you would head over to uh, youtube.com slash Zanata and visit our YouTube channel and subscribe and click that bell and also subscribe to our newsletter as well. If you haven't done that as well, Zanata.com slash newsletter, because that's where all of this stuff, you know, all the links, all the news stories, all the articles, everything comes out of that newsletter every Monday morning in your inbox with everything that you need. So, um, what are we up to? 13,500 subscribers. So it looks like we're going to finish the year 14,000 and change, Tyler. That'll just about. Yeah, sounds like yep. just about. Yeah, maybe. Yep, 14 and a half, maybe. Fantastic. All right. Well, with that, let's wrap it on up. Another show is in the books. Well, sir, have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. You too, I guess. Well, we'll see each other before Thanksgiving, but... Uh... We'll be working, but either way, um, for all of our viewers out there, definitely have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we will uh, be talking to you again soon. And as always, if you would like to book a meeting with us, 
uh, you can do so by heading over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting and we will be talking to one of us in no time at all I'll be happy to help you with any of your zoho issues on the website is where you'll also find complete episodes of the show as well as links to all the stories we discussed today uh, we'd appreciate if you would follow us here on youtube as well as your choice of podcast app we'll see you next week take care everybody